Aloha friends, it's Robert Stelick with Blue Planet Surf. Today I'm going to talk about setting up your foil gear. It's a question we get a lot, how do I set up the foil, where to place it, uh, you know, where to put foot straps, how to place your feet on the board, uh, what kind of board to get. I'm also going to talk about what kind of gear to use as a beginner and as a more advanced foiler and for different sports like this here is my stand-up paddle foil board then I have a wing foil board and a prone foil board I'm going to talk about the boards used, the foils used and then I'm also going to talk about foot placement how to figure out where to place your feet and how to attach a foot strap to your board so this video is going to be a little bit longer we have a lot of information on our website and on YouTube as well so down below in the description I'll put a lot of links to other videos and uh, links that will help you further along the way. The last video I posted was an interview with Kane DeWild and he has a lot of really good insight on foil setups and so on and he said he always likes to try a lot of different setups and, and figure out what works and, and really feel it out and, and it makes a lot of sense to me the more you can test things the more you know how things work together and how to optimize your setup and having a good setup especially the foil working well with your skill and how you use it is super important so having a good foil setup and the right board and then a good wing all those things together will automatically just make you better right away so these days i'm mostly into wing foiling this is the board i use the most here it's my uh my 4 6 by 78 liter wing foil board what but what i talk about here today applies to all foil sports including prone foiling wing foiling and stand-up foiling so I started foiling about five years ago and if you look back through the YouTube history of videos you'll see I first started on an 8.0 stand-up foil board that I just put a box into and that worked well to be start on and learn on and then after that I built a dedicated foil board that was a 7.6 and then pretty soon I felt like it was too big and the tail was dragging and so on so I chopped off the tail just to see what would happen and made it into a 6.11 and then that worked really well and I, I figured out yeah having that shorter swing weight and the shorter board really helps when you're foiling up on foil so and then I've been progressively progressively been testing smaller and smaller boards and you know now what I use for wing foiling is a 4.6 which is pretty tiny and then um, actually use uh, for paddle and prone foiling I use a similar size board this one here is a 310. I use this mostly for practicing my dock starts which I'm not very good at yet but working on that trying to dock start and pump and then for stand-up foiling I use this board here it's a it's a 5.8 by 114 liter board uh, for stand-up foiling I just need more stability um, like this the wing master board is great for wing foiling but it's not stable enough for me to stand a paddle on maybe a lighter weight uh, paddler with really good balance might be able to stand a paddle on this but generally speaking these, this board is going to be too small for most people to stand a paddle foil on so something like this the 5.8 is a really nice stand-up foil board also works well as a uh, wing foil board because wing foiling you have the lift of the wing so you don't need quite as much stability as you do for stand-up and bouncing uh, while you're standing up for getting started in wing foiling and stand-up foiling i recommend getting a, a bigger stable board so in our range we have the 611 and the 76 easy foiler models those are really good boards for learning how to stand up paddle foil and and wing foil and then as you get better and you're comfortable standing up and you can maybe switch your feet around and do, do all the basics on a bigger board, then you're ready to go some, to something smaller. Maybe something like this 5.8 carver foil board or um, for a little bit more advanced foilers and th these Wingmaster boards are awesome. So, but this is not going to be your first wing foil board. It's going to take um, a bigger board to first learn the basics on and then you can work your way down to a small board like this for me it was many boards in between and you know obviously I own a, a brand and I design these boards so I do a lot of R&D and um, made a lot of boards um, kind of slowly working my way down uh, probably just like a few inches and a few liters at a time so I didn't start on a big board and ended up on this right away there's a lot of steps in between and uh, you don't have to take that many steps but I would say the, uh, between a beginner board and a very advanced board there should be at least like two or three boards 
to get to that point where you can ride a really small board. So don't think you can just um, start wing foiling on a little tiny prone board like this. It's, it's possible, I've seen people do it before that are super talented athletes and are already very good foilers. Um, I've seen people learn how to wing foil on prone foil boards, but if you're an average Joe, don't even attempt it. It's gonna be way too hard to try to learn on a tiny board. And for me, wing foiling, I like to have a little bit more volume. So I'm, my weight is 195 pounds, I'm 6'2", and 195 pounds is roughly 90 liters or 90 kilograms. So that translates into 90 liters of volume to float me. So the first 90 liters of volume will float my body weight. And then of course you also have to add in the weight of the foil and the board itself. And, uh, and basically uh, if you want it to float you, you need to have equal amount of flotation to um, your body weight. So the volume really depends on your body weight. And then um, for a beginner, I recommend getting a board that has enough volume to float your body weight plus about maybe 20%. So for me, um, maybe as a beginner, I would use a board that's at least about 120 liters, maybe more um, that that will comfortably float me. For wing foiling, for stand-up foiling, you might want to get something even a little bit bigger. Maybe for me, I would choose like 140, 150 liters and uh, enough width and length and stability to be able to stand a paddle on and learn on. And then as you get better with the balancing and catching waves and getting up on the foil, then you can move smaller. And the foil does add stability to the board. So having a foil board is going to be more stable than a st regular stand-up paddle board but it's a certain type of balance that you have to kind of get used to. It doesn't just automatically make balancing easy. Um, it's just kind of a little bit delay. So you, it kind of slows down the movement of the board a little bit when that foil underneath. It's kind of like having a keel under your board. So next, let's talk about the foils themselves. I'm, I've been doing this a long time. I use quite a small foil now for, for wing foiling, especially like for waves and stuff like that, trying to go faster. Um, this is an Axis high aspect, uh, kind of high, high aspect foil. It's a, the 810 uh, wingspan, 810 millimeters wingspan, 32 inches. And the surface area is only uh, one thousand, the projected surface area is 1022 square centimeters and uh, that's about 158 square inches so this is a quite a small front wing but because it's pretty high aspect and um, it's actually quite has quite a bit of lift and a lot of glide so I really like this uh, front wing I also have a 760 which is a little bit more surfy which is also a really nice foil um, but for starting out on um, when I started, I used a really big foil, a 2,000 square centimeter foil. So when you're starting, something like the Carver foil, we have the Blue Planet Carver foil. It's a great foil for learning. It's uh, 2,000 square centimeters. It's stable, comes up at low speeds. It flies at a little bit lower speed, but it just kind of keeps gliding. If you're doing a transition, if you kind of muck it up a little bit, you got way more time to kind of glide out of the turn and stay up on the foil. And it just lifts up easier and lower speeds. So it's just much easier to use a bigger foil when you're starting out. And even as you progress, depending on the conditions you're winging in, having a big foil is, it just makes everything a little bit easier and, uh, and allows you to do more tricks and things like that. So these smaller foils are not for everybody, but as you get better, having a smaller foil and a thinner profile just make, allows you to go faster, do tighter turns, be more maneuverable. And, and going faster really helps in the waves because a lot of times when you're catching away from the outside, it's still moving really fast and you have to be able to keep up with that fast moving swell. And then having a faster, smaller wing will just help you be able to keep up with those waves versus like if you're um, just riding wind swell or just on a flat water uh, lake or something like that, having a bigger wing is nice because you can just fly a little bit more slowly. It's not a big deal. And then it just a lot, gives you more time to stay on foil, it's easier to get up on foil and lighter winds also. So there's a lot of advantages of using a bigger foil. So when you're starting out, definitely get a bigger size foil, something like 2000 square centimeters, or we also have a 1800 square centimeters, large size, something like that. And then in terms of mass length, I like to use a 90 centimeter mast. I've tried longer masts and that's uh, having a really long mast is nice for downwinders, things like that. 
but it does make the whole thing feel a little bit more tippy. On a shorter mast, you kind of have to follow the waves up and down. As the wave goes up, you have to um, dip your nose up and down, and longer mast allows you just to kind of fly straight over the smaller chops, so that's nice. But I have a really detailed video, and I'll put the link down below to that, um, on choosing the best foil for your needs. So watch that as well. That's, that has some really good information if you're not sure what kind of foil you're gonna need and so on. So next I'm gonna talk about putting the foil on the board and where to put it. So my car is pretty small, so I have to take the foil off the board and put it back on every time I use it. And for that reason, I bought this little impact driver, which is a really nice tool to have. Really makes it easy to put the foil on and off. And for me, I usually just keep the the bolts in the board and I tighten them down so they can't slide. So I just loosen up these four bolts. You don't want to leave them in the board loose because they can slide out and then if they drop out while you're carrying the board in the grass or something like that, you, these are easy to lose. So always make sure these are tight enough so they can't sl slide out by themselves. It's nice to have a mass plate that has, that allows you to slide the bolts onto it. And then I like to just tighten them down a little bit, get them all in place. Once they're all situated, then you can kind of um, crank them down a little bit. You definitely want to make sure these are tight on there because you don't want these bolts to loosen up while you're riding. So now I got the foil on the board and the next question is how do you place the foil on the board? And that really, it really depends on the foil itself and the, the board, the size of the board. Came to Wild came up with a good method to have a good starting point of where to place your foil. And that's just if you lift up the whole setup from the thickest point of the foil, the thickest point of the foil is about a third back of, on the profile. So that's where the center of lift is. So the front wing creates the lift, center of lift is right here at the thickest part. So if you lift up your setup from that point, your board should be pretty much level. So if your board is level, that means the center of gravity of your whole system is straight underneath the center of lift of the foil. So then, let's say this, you project that to here, then on the other side of the board, if you look at that same point on the deck, this should be pretty much in between your feet. So if your feet are too far forward, you're gonna to have to put more weight on the back of, on your back foot. If, you, if your feet are too far back, then you have to lean more on your front foot. So ideally, you wanna have your feet equally balanced so that the center of lift is right between your feet. And then if it's also the center of gravity of the whole system, it'll just feel way more balanced. The weight of the system and the center of volume all balance out, it really helps. And, and this is pretty much true for all size boards, that whether it's a big, stand-up foil board or a smaller prone board, um, that balancing out is, is a really good starting point on where your foil will work best and where you can stand and catch the wave in, in the right place or take off and put your feet in the right place um, where the basically the volume and, and the weight of the board and the weight of the whole system, everything is kind of nicely balanced out. Okay, next let's talk about your foot placement. So my feet are about equally balance out between the front and the back of the um, center of lift. So if you project the center of lift of the front foil between your feet, it's gonna be more or less between your feet. And some people have their back foot further forward, but then they also move their front foot further back. So if you have a, a smaller stance or, or a wider stance, if you put your back foot further back, you need to put your front foot further forward. So you always wanna find that balance. If your stance is too far forward, you're gonna always have sore, a sore back leg because you're always leaning back at higher speeds to just control the foil. You're gonna, always, or pumping and so on, it's gonna put a lot more strain on your back leg. So if your back leg is always sore, probably you just wanna move that foot further back on the board so that when, when you're riding and at normal speed, your weight should be just right over the foil and you shouldn't have to put more weight on one side or the other. So small hip movements add to control the height of the foil. So that's really important to have the center of lift of the foil underneath the board balanced between your two feet. And ideally, before you put foot straps on your board, you want to kind of figure out without foot straps where your feet are. Usually, maybe take some video with a GoPro or something like that to kind of figure out where do I put my feet on the board. 
when you're starting out, I don't recommend using foot straps. Our boards have this little arch bar here that's right over the mast. So that gives you a nice tactile feel for where your back foot is. And then the front foot, you know, usually I kind of oriented uh, with this logo, the Blue Planet logo, a little bit front or back. And you do want the weight to be either both feet right over the center line or if your front foot is a little bit off to the side, your back foot should also be equally off to the side. So whether you're on the center line or slightly off center, you just want to make sure that your body weight is over the center line of the board. Otherwise, you're going to tilt the board. And um, with the wing, sometimes you can get away with both feet being off to one side when you're powered. But then as soon as you let go of the power and you're just on the foil, then the board will want to tip over. Like if you both of your feet are too far off the side, it won't fly well without the power of the wing. Same thing if you're towing behind the boat, you can get away with kind of leaning on the side, one side, having your weight on one side because you're kind of leaning against the rope. But as soon as you let that rope go, you need to have your, set, your weight centered right over the middle of the board and over the middle of the foil, otherwise you're going to tip over. So it's best to start riding your board without foot straps, just figuring out the placement where you put the feet. And then once you know where to put your feet, another good way to transition to foot straps is using foot hooks. We have these EVA foot hooks. I'll put the link down to a video down below for that as well. Uh, those ones you can kind of attach to the board and kind of wedge your feet against it. And that's helpful without having your feet in the straps or having to slide your feet into straps and so on. So the foot hooks are kind of a good step in between no straps and going straight to straps. And then when you want to start using straps, ideally I would say use the front strap only at first, get comfortable with the front strap. And then once you're comfortable with that, you can add a back strap. And basically if you want to jump, if you're wing foiling and you want to jump, you have to have foot straps on your board. Okay, so to take the foil off, same thing in reverse. I just put it upside down. Uh, I loosen the screws and then I um, tighten them back down, not too tight, but just so they can't slide around in the box. So put them at the end of the box, just tighten them down a little bit. Same in the back. Take the foil off. Okay. So it's pretty important to keep these little bolts tight in the board so they can't slide out. Okay, so next I'm going to go over how to attach these foot straps to the board. Uh, this is our Blue Planet Deluxe foot strap. It's like a neoprene covered foot strap. They're nice and padded. They have like a Velcro adjustability. So they're nice and stiff. And you know, you want your straps to kind of stand up by themselves so the feet can slide in easily. Some of the really lightweight thin straps kind of can collapse and then it's really hard to get your foot in. You have to kind of find the strap and wiggle your feet in. So I like to use straps that have more padding. They're softer, easier on your feet, easier to slide in and out of, and they stay up uh, better. So that's why I like using these little bit thicker straps. They add a little bit of weight to your board, but to me the comfort is way more important than saving a couple ounces of weight. So our straps come with these plastic washers and, and foot strap insert screws. So these ones go into the type of plastic inserts that most of the boards have. And these ones have a PH3 Phillips head number three head. So you have to make sure you use the right size head like this, a little bit that thicker Phillips head. And then basically what I do is I just take the whole strap apart and then I put the screw through the washer and then attach that into the middle hole of the strap. So I'm going to put the, just make sure the screw kind of goes into that middle hole on the strap, like this on one side, and on the other side as well. Okay, so now I have the screws attached to the two parts of the foot strap. I'm going to turn this inside out so I have easy access to the holes and then push this screw through the hole. And now I'm going to slide this neoprene back over, this neoprene cover back over the screw and the washer. And the washer really helps keep it from um, moving around. So, okay, so now I got the neoprene cover covering the screw. And this is really important, like if you're kneeling on your board and you slip off or something like that, if you have like a sharp screw head sticking out on your board anywhere, 
you just mess up your shins. So having a strap with a covered screw is really important, I think. Okay, so now I have the, the screw covered. I already know my location here, but, um, and you know, another thing to mention is, for me, I just keep my feet in the same stance. So I got my feet always in the same stance. If you're um, switching your stance, uh, then you, you know, our, whole, our boards have inserts for straps. You can put one strap like this and one strap like this for the front feet. If you want to switch and ride it both directions. And then on the back foot, you can uh, then put a centered strap in the middle or you can uh, offset the strap. Like we have inserts that are offset by, uh, I think two inches from the center line. So for me, I use the front strap, um, a little bit offset to the right. And then, um, so I use the front strap so it's slightly offset. And then the back foot is slightly offset um, off the center line. So this is the center line of the board. So my feet are that way, I'm more or less balanced over the center of the board. So I'm gonna, figure out the right place to put it. And then, you know, our, these screw heads, um, so the, these screws have a flat surface, so you can't um, go through the bottom of the insert. These inserts only go about an inch deep into the board, so if you use a pointy screw and it's too long, you can actually go through the inside of the insert and into the foam of the board, and then if you take that screw out, it'll leak water. So you don't wanna use a screw that has a pointy head or is too long, for sure. But, okay, so I got this side in. I'm gonna make sure it goes into the right hole, set it right into the hole, and then I'm gonna tighten it down. Now, um, this washer actually is gonna compress down against the, against the deck pad. So it actually takes quite a bit of pressure to get it into the right location. So uh, right now I can still move this back and forth. So that's not tight enough. I'm gonna make it tighter. Okay, it's still moving a little bit, but I'm gonna attach the other side first. So I have the right angle and then, I'll, then I'm gonna tighten it down fully. So the same thing on the other side, I'm gonna flip the strap inside out so I have access to these holes. Put the screw in the center hole on this foot strap and then slide the neoprene cover back over the top. And then I'm gonna keep the Velcro open. By the way too, this cover goes all the way over the nylon strap on the inside. So the neoprene padding is covering the ed edges of the strap. So sometimes straps that have just nylon on the ends kind of hard. If you, if you hit your toes against it, it can really be painful. So it's really nice to have straps that have good padding all the way to the, um, over the straps. So basically the whole strap is covered with neoprene. Okay, so now I got the other side in. I'm gonna set the screw into the hole. Make sure you're not drilling into the wrong place on your board. And you want, definitely wanna make sure it go, goes into the right hole. Tighten it down. Okay, so now you can still move it around a little bit, but it's um, a pretty good spot. And I still have these open. So now I'm gonna adjust the strap to the right length. And to do that, I actually just put my foot right into the strap. And uh, for me, I, I use kind of this, this um, kind of the fat part of my foot right here, this bone is kind of where the strap is gonna go over. So I'm gonna slide it into the strap pretty deep. So to set up the strap, I like to have the strap pretty far up my foot and I'm just gonna open it all the way. And then I'm gonna tighten the Velcro over my foot at this, at this height. Tighten down the Velcro. So, and then you can slide my foot out. We want to make sure that this Velcro is opposite of this Velcro. So that way, when you close the cover, it kind of attaches to both sides of the Velcro, okay? So then you tighten it up real good. Kind of shape it a little bit and test it again. So usually I get my foot maybe about this far in, in the strap. And this one still, it still, still feels a little bit tight, so I'm gonna actually loosen it up a little bit more. 
Sometimes they, the straps will loosen up a little bit while you're using them. So I'm just going to slide my foot in a little bit deeper to get it bigger. Tighten it down again. So, and you can actually do this in the water. If you, if you feel your strap is too tight or too loose, it's pretty easy to just open your strap and adjust the height. So, and test it again. Yeah, this feels good. I got good hold, but I can easily slide out. So you want to be able to kind of slide out easily when you fall, but you want it to be tight enough so when you're jumping and stuff like that, you don't just slip out. You want your foot to be tight in the strap. So this is a good height for me. Okay, so once I have it in exactly the right place, I'm just going to straighten out the strap so it's all lined up. And then I'm going to tighten it down some more. And you know, the, basically that washer pushes down the deck pad to where it's, um, you know, it pushes down against the deck of the board itself. So ideally now when I'm trying to wiggle it, okay, this one still moves around a little bit, so I'm going to make it more tight. I want it to be so tight that it won't move yet. So now see, even if I move the strap, it's still a little bit loose. Okay, that's good. Now I can't, even when I move the strap around, this washer is tight. So, and sometimes over time, the deck pad kind of gives a little bit. So you might have to re-tighten these after a few uses. But for now, just get it to the point where you can't move it easily with just the foot strap moving around. Because one of my pet peeves is when I use other people's boards and their straps are all loose and they get all twisted and it just makes it harder to get your foot in. The more you, your, uh, your foot straps have a nice structure and uh, the easier it is to get your feet in and out of the straps and that helps a lot. It makes it safer and easier and uh, more comfortable to ride it and so on. Another tip is when you, um, when you store your board, don't lay it like this flat on the straps because then all the weight of the board sits on the straps and can kind of flatten out the straps. You don't want these straps to be like flattened down and, and take this shape because then it just makes it harder to put your foot in. You want to keep the straps kind of in a nice open position. So like when I put it in my car, I usually keep it upside down, but I'm, I have something underneath it that puts the weight more here or in the nose or in the tail and keep the weight off the, off the straps. So when I put it in the car, I make sure there's something underneath it that keeps the weight off the straps so they don't get flattened out. I've also seen people do, who just stick like a pool noodle or something in their straps just so, keep, so they keep their shape better. Having that nice open foot strap shape really helps. Another thing for the front strap, I like to place it so that, you know, if water comes over the front of the board, if you, you know, if your nose sinks and you, or do a hard landing or something like that, the water shoots over the board. Uh, I like to have it so the Velcro kind of uh, opens away from the water flow. Like if you had to turn the other way, the water flow could actually push this Velcro open, you know? So by turning it this way, where the Velcro is with the direction of the water flow, it's less likely to get pushed open by the water. So that's just another little pointer. So having good foot straps is super important. I think um, just make sure that the neoprene is nice and soft, slippery. You don't want straps that that kind of trap your feet or they're hard to slide in and out of. You don't want straps that don't have good padding. You don't want straps that have exposed screws that can scratch you up. So having good foot straps is super important, especially if you do stuff like big jumps or uh, aerial moves or tricks. Um, also when you're pumping or it just gives you way more control when you're surfing the wave and so on. But if you're just starting out, always start without foot straps, slowly work your way up to, to using foot straps. Start with the front, front strap only. Later on, add your back strap. Make sure you're comfortable using them. And uh, once they're set up perfectly, um, it's awesome. And usually you can just leave the foot straps in the same position if you have a box then you just change your um, location of your foil if as needed to keep the center of lift over the center of your feet. So that's it. I hope you found this video helpful to get your gear all set up properly and nicely balanced and so on. Um, thanks so much to all the Blue Planet customers for your support. 
you know, definitely if you're looking for new gear, check out our website, blueplanetsurf.com or come to our shop in Honolulu and we'll get you set up. We have a really nice deal. If you're buying a board and a foil together, you get $100 off. If you're buying a board, a foil and a wing together, you get $150 off. So just call us and we'll be happy to help you. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you on the water. Aloha.